The Cats of Ulthar. The Cats of Ulthar, 1920, is featured in our collection of Halloween stories. It is said that in Ulthar, which lies beyond the river sky, no man may kill a cat. And this is, and this I can verily believe as I gave gaze upon him who sitheth, sitheth, sitheth purring before the fire. For the, cat is cri- for the cat is cryptic, and close to strange things which man cannot see. He is the soul of antique Aegyptus, Egyptus, and bearer of tales from forgotten cities in Meroe and Ophir. He is the kin of the jungle's lord, of the jungle's lords. An heir to the heir to the secrets of hoary and sinister, sinister Africa, the th- the sphinx the th- the sphinx in his, is his cousin, and he speaks her language, but he is more ancient than the sphinx than the sphinx, and remembers that which she hath forgotten. Forgotten. Damn, reading is hard, huh? <laughs> in Ulthar. Before even, be, wow, I'm not awake. In Ulthar, before ever the Burgesses forbade the killing of cats, there dwelt an old carter and his wife who delighted to trap and slay the cats of their neighbors. Why they did this, I know not. Save that many hate the voice of the cat in the night. And take it ill that cat should run stealthily about your hearts, guards, and at twilights. But whatever the reason, this old man and woman took pleasure in trapping and slaying cats, slaying every cat which came near through their hovel. And from some of the sounds heard after dark, many villagers fancied that the manner of slaying was exceedingly peculiar. But the villagers did not discuss such things with the old man and his wife because of the habitual expression on the withered faces of the two, and because their cottage was so small and so darkly hidden under spreading oaks at the back of of a neglected yard. In truth, much as the owners of cats hated these odd folk, they feared them more, and instead of berating them as 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 brutal assassins, merely took care that no cherished pet or mouser should stray toward the remote, the remote hovel under the dark trees. When through some unavail, unavoidable f- oversight a cat was missed, and sounds heard after dark, the loser would lament impotently, impotently, or console himself by thanking fate that it was not one of his children who had co- who had the, 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 who had thus, thus vanished. For the people of Ulthar were simple and knew not whence it all cats first came. It is all cats first came. One day a caravan of strange wanderers from the south entered the narrow cobbled streets of Ulthar. Dark wanderers they were. And unlike the other roving folk who passed through the village twice every year, in the marketplace they sold, they told fortunes of silver for silver and bought gay beads from the merchants. What the hell is a gay bead? Probably not what I think it is. What was the land of these wanderers? None could tell. But it was seen that they were given to strange prayers, and that they had painted on the sides of their wagon strange figures with human bodies and the heads of cats, hawks, rams, and lions. And the leader of the caravan wore a headdress with two horns and a curious disc betwixt the horns. There was in in this singular caravan a little boy with no father or mother, but only a tiny black kitten to cherish. The plague had not been kind to him, yet had left him this small furry thing to mitigate his sorrow. And when one is very young... One can find great relief in the lively antics of a black kitten. 
saw the boy whom the dark people called Menace, smiled more often than he wept as he sat playing with his graceful kitten on the steps of an oddly painted wagon. On the third morning of the, of the wanderer's stay in Ulthar, Menace could not find his kitten, and as he sobbed aloud in the marketplace, certain villagers told him of the old man and his wife, and of sounds heard, through, heard in the night. And when he heard these things, his sobbing gave place to meditation, and finally to prayer. He stretched out his, his arms towards the sun, and prayed in a tongue no villager could understand, though indeed the villagers did not try very hard to understand. Since their attention was mostly taken up by the sky and odd shapes the cloud were, clouds were assuming, it was very peculiar. But as the little boy uttered his petition, there seemed to form overhead the shadowy, nebulous figure of exotic things, of hybrid creatures crowned with horn flank discs. Nature is full of such illusions to impress the imaginative. That night, the wanderers left Ilthar and were never seen again. And the householders were troubled when they noticed that in all the village there was not a cat to be found. From each hearth, and f the familiar cat had vanished. Cats large and small, black, grey, striped, yellow and white. Old, old Cranon, the burgomaster, swore that the dark folk had taken the cats away in revenge for killing, of for the killing of Manus Kitten, and cursed the caravan and the little boy, but Nith, the lean notary, declared that the old Carter and his wife were likely were more likely the were more likely persons to suspect, suspect, for their natural for their hatred of cats was notorious and increasingly bold. Still, no one durst complain to the sinister couple. Even when little Adol, the innkeeper's son, vowed that he had at twilight seen all the cats of Ulthar in that accursed yard under the trees, pacing very slowly and solemnly in a circle around the cottage, to her breasts. To a breast. A breeze. A breast? A breeze. I don't know. As if in performance of some unheard of unheard of right of beasts. The villagers did not know how much to believe from the so small from so small a boy. And though they feared that the evil pair had charmed the cats to their death, they preferred not to chide on the the old cutter till they met him outside his dark and repelling, repellent yard. So Ulthar went to sleep in vain anger. And the people awakened at dawn behold, every cat was back at his accustomed hearth. Large and small, sm small, black, grey, striped, yellow, and white. None was missing. Very sleek and fat. Very sleek and fat did the cats appear, and sonorous with purring and purring content. The citizens talked with one another of the affair, but marvelled not a little old Cranon again insisted that it was the dog folk who had taken him taken them. Since cats did not return alive from the cotton of the ancient man and his wife, but all agreed on one thing, that a refusal of all the cats to eat their portions of meat or drink their saucers of milk was exceedingly curious, and for two whole days asleep, days this leak, lazy cats of Ulfa would touch no food, but only doze by the fire or in the sun. It was fully a week before the villagers noticed that no lights were appearing at dusk, dusk in the windows of the cottage under the trees. Then the lean Nith remarked that no one had seen the old man or his wife since the night that the cats were taken away. What a way. What? My sentence makes more sense, okay? <laughs> in another week, the burgomaster decided to overcome his fears and call at the strangely silent dwelling as a matter of duty. Though in so doing, he was careful to take him, take with him Shang the blacksmith and told the cutter of stone as witnesses. 
and when they had broken down the frail door they found only this. Two cleanly picked human skeletons on the earthen floor, and a number of singular beetles crawling in the shadowy corners. There was subsequently much talk among the burgress, burgesses of Ulthar, Sath, the coroner, disputed at length with Nith, the lean notary, and Cranon and Shang until were overwhelmed with questions. Even little uh, at all, the innkeeper's son, was co closely questioned and given a sweet mat as a reward. They talked of the old Carter and his wife, of the caravan of dark wanderers, of small menace and his black kitten, of the prayer of menace and of the sky during the prayer, of the doings of the cats on the night of the on the night the caravan was left, and of what later fo was found in the cat cottage under the dark trees in the repellent yard. And in the end, the burgesses bird passed that remarkable law, which is told by the traders by the traders in Hathak and discussed by travelers in there, namely that in Ulthar, no man may kill a cat. Whew. Oh, I don't know, I liked it. Yeah, H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a good one. I like it. I still want to know what happened, though. What happened to the cats? In that one night. Did the boy curse the guys and make the cats kill them or something? Perhaps. Also, what was the importance of the one cat? The black cat. Whatever it was. This one. Yeah. The, the one that's more ancient than Sphinx. He is the soul of Inca antique Egyptus. The one of the... This one. Hmm. Who is that one? <sighs> Anyways. I would give it... I liked it. So let me give it an 8.5 as well. Yeah. Um, now what to say about it? Mm, I feel like the guys, the people of the village, felt they were in danger when realizing the people that killed the cats were murdered. Well, at least just cursed. So they, like, decided... Let's not have people kill cats. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to talk about. No. I It's an 8.5 out of it, and I definitely recommend it. Although, if you're here, you probably won't need to read it anymore unless you want to do it yourself. Or, or tell someone about it. Yeah, sure. But yeah, it's a good one. I liked it. I guess that's it. No hidden message or anything, yeah. <laughs>